Hola, chicas. Welcome to Encuentras Your Voice podcast. Here at your midweek to shake things up a bit, disrupt your typical work week, and fill your soul with conversation that feeds you, helps you discover your authenticity, and invites you back to the person you're born to be. I'm your host, Consuelo Crosby, here with you every Wednesday at 5 o'clock on the Pacific Coast of California, bringing you amazing amigas to share in conversation and then follow up again with a pod club episode of the real gems we uncovered, which you'll hear next week. Today's guest, in full form, is going to rock your boat. And given that we are heading into halfway through 2024 already, this is the perfect time to hear the advice this fab Latina shares today. If you are at a moment when life just feels too big, too fast, and you're just not feeling that you are the goddess of your life, then this is the episode that will feel like one big hug, followed by a huge, much needed exhale, and a whole hell of a lot of laptops slamming shut. Mexican American Latina Alexa Martinez is an expansion and business coach for women entrepreneurs and thought leaders who are ready to reclaim their lives by placing themselves at the center of their universe. Are you getting the goddess vibes? On this episode, Alexa talks about reframing your life around your core values to center your focus, decision-making, and accomplishments by bringing joy back into your life. Because as we say on this podcast, you are so much greater as a person, as an individual, as yourself, than anything that you do, especially work. So if you're wrapped up in work or school, a career, family, and it's being done in a way that doesn't hit your core values, then you have put yourself on that path towards burnout. Yep, that's what we're talking about today, burnout. Even the slow burn or the sudden chaos collapse, we have all been there. Hated it, got stuck, and didn't know what to do. Even Alexa gets totally honest and vulnerable in sharing her own story of burnout and how she found her way out of it. She shares that burnout keeps you a slave to the past and a slave to the future, and you are never present. Let that sink in for a minute. The absolute worst feeling of missing out of your best life. But what are core values and how do you define them? That's what we're bringing to you today. And once you get to know Alexa in the next few minutes, then you'll understand just how valuable they are to reclaiming the life you want. So sit back, get cozy, Open your mind to endless possibilities as you listen to Alexa Martinez in Melbourne, Australia, sharing her most authentic self here on Encuentras Your Voice podcast. Welcome to Encuentras Your Voice podcast, Alexa. So happy to have you here. And this is a different tone of voice than we're used to. So I am so ready for this one. How are you today? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I am doing very well joining you bright and early from across the world in Melbourne, Australia. But yeah, I'm really excited to be here and excited to chat. How are you? Yes. Yes. Melbourne, Australia, hitting a different continent. Hello, Melbourne. I'm really excited to have you here. But this is part of the story, right? How you ended up there. But we'll get to that. So as we always do on Encuentras, we love to honor our ancestors and our heritage and bring forth a time to really celebrate them. So if you could take a moment and share with us your heritage story. My heritage story is one that is still evolving. And we spoke about this when we first met, which has been a really cool thing to unpack as an adult. So growing up, I always kind of saw myself as Mexican-American and 
never felt Mexican enough. I never felt American enough. I never felt brown enough. I never, I never felt white enough. Like I felt like I didn't fit in any spaces, especially because I am biracial. Um, my dad being half European or like British, Irish, and also Mexican, um, being really detached from his culture and really being really detached from that Mexican heritage. My mom being from Mexico and my grandparents being like super Mexican and, you know, the classic migrant story and, and all of that good stuff. And so I always felt a little bit confused, but as I, as I've grown up and as I've um, just connected more with my culture, connected more with specifically where my ancestors come from and specifically my great grandmother. So my grandfather's mom, she was a hundred percent indigenous and she, she, it's really through her and through my connection with her. Um, I think I shared with you, I did like a little medium reading and like connected with her a couple of years ago um, and learning about her, learning about her skills, learning about her talents, learning about her kind of little practices that she she used to do that I've really gotten to learn about just the power that's existed in my family, the culture that exists that's existed in my family. And so, yeah, my heritage story is one that's still evolving and that I'm still learning about. And it's been I'm actually really grateful that I'm learning about it now at this age, because I think if I was younger, I wouldn't be able to fully grasp and appreciate because, you know, growing up in the 90s and the early 2000s, like you just wanted to be like everybody else. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You bring up a very uh, big point that resonates with a lot of the audience. What was the pain point where you just went, you know, this living two different lives, two different cultures, this is killing me. Like, do you remember that point? So there was lots of like appreciate appreciation for like our Mexican heritage in the fi- family unit inside of the house, right? Um, and that's something that I love and something that I cherish to this day is like all of those experiences, the food, the parties, the cousins, the aunties, the uncles, like all of that. Um, but then outside of the house, I was in a lot of white spaces. So I grew up in Las Vegas. I think my mom was so committed to giving, like putting me in spaces where I would excel. And of course, those spaces are predominantly white. And so, you know, you go to private schools and you're surrounded by majority white people. And of course, you're going to want to be like the majority, especially when, you know, I think as well, my mom being first gen, she also wanted to assimilate because she was also put in those situations. So I think for her, there was a lot of shame and there was a lot of like, just wanting to be like everyone else. And I think for her daughters, especially for her eldest, which is me, you know, I think she just wanted like the best. And she just wanted to put me in the spaces and give me the opportunities that would, that would allow me to do that. So when I was in high school, I got into a little bit of trouble and I actually was transferred to like a different school, um, like a smaller, um, I went to public school and then I was transferred to like a private school. Um, and there was actually a lot of people of color there. And I remember it being something that was really appreciated. Like whiteness wasn't the focus, if that makes sense. And it was obviously a very small population of kids, but I just remember being like, ah, oh, like, okay, this is actually really like celebrated here, which was really kind of one of the first times that I had really seen that. Um, and so it was almost like exter- being externally validated for being like personal color. I was like, oh, I guess it is kind of cool. And then as I grew up, as I you know left university, went out into the world, I just started to really see myself as more than like, you know, obviously I'm a woman, I'm a person, I'm, I'm all these things, but this intrinsicness to me is like my culture and this lineage of people who come before me. And um, I don't know, it just felt so much more ingrained. It felt so much more like this is so much a part of who I am in a way that adds so much value. And I think over the last really kind of 10 years, like I'm 32 now, there's just been this evolution of appreciation, exploration, curiosity, um, that's continued to grow inside of me. No, it's really beautifully put. And the fact that at that moment, it just sounds like like a stick of dynamite went off in you and it just like broke open that whole very contained, sealed, this is how I have to operate in this society. 
you just exploded into realizing, like reconnecting with all those little parts of you and they're flourishing. They're all flourishing independently. Um, it's really exciting to f- see who you're going to keep becoming once you keep garnering all this knowledge and your ancestry and what it will trigger in you that you don't even know maybe exist. You had told me your great grandmother was a healer and had a spirituality to her, an intuition to her. Do you see this coming up in your life? My great grandmother on my mom's side, but on her dad's side, my grandfather's mother on my mom's side. So yes, she was quite the healer, psychic, also devout Roman Catholic, of course, all of the duality that exists (laughs) within the culture and and it still lives on in my family today. It's so funny. Like my grandfather is truly like the son of her. Like he still has all of his little practices that he does. People would come to her when they wanted like to know something, when they wanted to get to the bottom of something, when they wanted to probably do some other kind of things as well, you know? So she dabbled in a lot of things, but yeah, when I found this out, I was like, wow, that is so incredibly interesting because I have always felt this huge... I don't know if I want to say psychic pull, but definitely a strong intuition within me. And although I grew up Roman Catholic, as many Mexicans have, um, my family wasn't overly religious or spiritual. My grandparents really were, but my parents weren't. So, you know, we did the good Catholic thing. We went to church. We did the first communion and all that stuff. But it wasn't like, it wasn't brought home. It really stemmed from this inner knowing and this inner voice and this inner wisdom, this intrinsicness that I felt like I was really born with. Um, And so, yeah, over the last couple of years, obviously working in the coaching space and working in the personal development space um, and really using a lot of my intrinsic gifts and the work that I do, I definitely, I definitely see that coming out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Tethered, tethered with her spirit and in your DNA, it's coming forward. Do you think that was a little bit of what prompted you to literally go from LA to as far away, I think, as you can get from LA and land in Melbourne? (laughs) Explain that story. So much of why I've been able to do what I've, what I've done. And I've already kind of nodded to this once in in the episode today is because of my mom. And I think that growing up, I was given the space to really dream and to really consider all of my options. I was the first person in my family to go to college. I'm the first person in my family to live abroad. I'm the first person in my family to do a lot of things. And I feel feel really honored and, and proud to do those things. But I also know that none of that would have been possible if it wasn't for my mother's attitude towards me and like the life that I was allowed to think that I could have, um, which I know is a really rare and special thing that I'm incredibly grateful for. I feel like typically, not just with Latino culture, but with a lot of different cultures, there is this sense of responsibility to your parents and to your family where you shouldn't go too far and you shouldn't leave. And I think something that I just so appreciate was my mom. I remember when I was like 18 years old and this is when like the financial crisis was happening. So it was in like 2010. We had lost everything. Um, My mom had been made redundant. Our home, we were like squatting in our house. Our cars had been repossessed. Like it was a really, really wild time. Thank God my mom is like completely rebuilt, totally self-made. She's amazing. But I remember like we were flat broke, like literally so broke. And I remember my mom just being like, you have to leave here. Like you have to go and you have to build your life. She's like, I just don't want you to be stuck here in all of this. And I just remember that conversation so vividly. And I remember that just being the permission that I needed because as the like dutiful, dutiful oldest daughter, of course I want to stay. Of course I want to take care of my little sister who's seven years younger than me and who's like my freaking baby. Um, of course I want to take care of my mom who's hurting, right? And I remember her just being like, you can't stay here. And she was just like, I'm not going to let you stay here. Like you have to go. You have to figure out how you're going to get to university, like make it happen. And Yeah. And that's really been the catalyst for everything that I've done. I have constantly been given people who have also been catalysts. Like I think of, I worked at this coffee shop 
a couple of years after I graduated uni university. Um, and after being there for a couple of years, I felt so restless. I knew that I was meant for more. I knew I wanted to do all these things. And he just told me, like he looked at me and he was like, you need to go see the world. You need to write a list. You need to, and you need to go get perspective and you need to go see the world and you need to see what is possible. He's like, you're living in a little bubble in Costa Mesa, California. And he's like, you need to go see how big this world is and it's gonna change the way that you interact with it. And again, yet again, another person championing me and saying, you have permission to go. And that was ultimately the thing that led me to go to Australia. So I came here on a holiday. Um, I had a friend who I went to university with who lived here and I called her and I was like, hey, can I come stay indefinitely? And she was like, yes, absolutely. And so I bought a one-way ticket. And in that time, I ended up meeting my now partner. And this is another thing. Like, this is where you start to see that, like, purposefulness and intention of the story. Because um, when I met my partner, it was crazy because I was like, I've, I've known you before. Like, not in this life, but, like, in some other life, I've known you. Um, I didn't even believe in, like, past lives or any of that type of... I didn't even know that existed in terms of being a conversation. But when I met him, I was like... I know you, I've known you. I was so meant to get on that plane and come to this place at that perfect time. And I came back to the US still so hungry for adventure. And obviously in this relationship, obviously falling in love. And I remember my mom, I was like, you know, I'm thinking about moving to Australia. I'm petrified. I'm 23 years old. What am I like? What if it falls apart? And my mom just looked at me and she's like, then you just come home. Double whammy, double whammy, free to go, free to come home. Beautiful. Your personality is very large. You have a, this beautiful, joyful, like curious spirit that I'm sure w at any stage prior to right now was just wanting out. And I think people around you probably sense that even though your heart was with them and wanting to be uh, taking care of other people, which you do really well that you were just bursting to, and they knew the way out. And that was really feeding you. I want to get into what you do because you have this personality and this sense of going out in the world and feeling like you're not alone in it. I think maybe that's where this intuition comes in, this sense, this deeper spirituality, a deeper feeling for what's going on in the universe, in the world, without ever having to be told it. I feel like not having known you very long at all, that you have this um, take no prisoners while you're reveling in life. And even the tagline of your business is not for the faint of heart. Those are the bookends that are defining um, your persona, which is just larger than human life. So how did you bring that forward in your business? From a very young age, I was like, I want to save the world. Like literally as a child, I'm like, I, I don't know how, but I want to save the world. I want to do something that's going to make the world a better place. Um, but simultaneously, I also wanted fun and joy. And there's always been this real duality in me of like, I want it all. I want to like taste it and see it. And I want to like sink my teeth into it. I'm a very, I'm a very trial and error person. So for me, I only learn by doing. I only learn by seeing. I only learn by touching. I only learn by experience. And so so much of my journey has just been throwing myself in to the deep end, <laughs> um, for better or for worse. And so when it comes to my business, I'm a business and a leadership coach. And so many of the women that I work with are building businesses and building brands and wanting to be incredible leaders. And I say, that is so incredible. And I am so excited that you're being invited into that. So what's the invitation here? Who do you have to be in order to facilitate that, in order to hold that, in order to be the leader of leaders, in order to inspire at that level, in order to experience that much ease, right? And this is truly how I, I view life through is like this constant invitation into being, right? This is the whole point. Who are you being invited to, to be, right? It's not about the doing. It's not even about the art. It's not even about the businesses. It's about who you become on this journey, right? And I think that that's, I mean, that's where fulfillment comes from. That's where true satisfaction comes from. That's where true success comes from when you look in the mirror and you actually like who you're looking at. That is your life journey, right? Who, becoming who you are is so much bigger than anything you're going to do. 
So as you know, for everyone getting caught up in what they do or what they have done or their accolade, it's such a small piece. And it is the danger, right? Because if you get so attached to that and it fails or it disappears or it gets taken away, a lot of people just lose themselves with it. Like, well, they're total failures in their mind. But they don't have that freedom to say, well, I can go back to being this. You know, that wasn't for me. That wasn't. So that is a, a really valuable lesson to be speaking out loud as you're speaking to maybe clients, friends, whoever is out in the universe and sharing who you are. I'm hoping people are picking up on that from you, that you have the freedom to go. You have the freedom to come back. You have the freedom to fail and because it's just something you have done. It is not who you are. Absolutely. This has become a huge part of my message because I burnt out really badly last year. Um, like really, really bad. It was really brutal, but ultimately it was like the catalyst that I needed to just find a little bit of that extra clarity and, and really double down on my values. And I was absolutely making my work my whole identity. I was making it all of my validation, all of my value, it was like totally consuming me. And at about August, September last year, I had this big, big, big realization um, that that was all true, but also that simultaneously by doing that, I was making myself so much smaller. And it was in that rock bottom moment where I, and when I tell you I burnt out, I mean like my life was in flames. Like I had abandoned my relationship for my business. I had really abandoned a lot of my friendships. I wasn't investing in my community. I wasn't setting goals. Like I feel like a lot of people, especially coming out of the pandemic can resonate with, with, with a lot of burnout recently. And so Obviously, I had a huge choice. Like, I actually started like interviewing for jobs after three and a half years of full time entrepreneurship. I was like, I think I need to be done with this. Like, I don't know if I can do this and and not make it my everything. And I actually started interviewing for jobs, and it was in the interview process where I was like, okay, wait a second, I'm really good at what I do. I am absolutely here to do fucking more. I am absolutely here to to create and to share this fucking passion and to create this new paradigm around success and to and to help people just, I think for me, true satisfaction is like always the goal, like inviting people into that deep, deep fulfillment and to really enjoy their lives. And so I really started to ask the question, okay, cool. If I didn't like, if business wasn't my whole world, what would it look like? Right. And if I could do really, really cool shit, what would that look like? And if I didn't have to spend one minute of my time entertaining anything that I didn't want to talk about, what would that look like? And I closed all of my spaces. I finished all of my client contracts and I spent three months writing. And I hired a copywriter who just so happens to be one of my really dear friends. And we found the words together because I didn't need any more strategy. I didn't need a life coach. I didn't need a business coach. I just needed someone to help me make sense of my words. And I came out in about December and I had so much clarity, so much connection, but also so much detachment. And I like to use the analogy of like a solar system now. I use this with myself. I use this with clients. So when you think about a solar system, you have the sun at the center. And for so many of us, what we do is at the center in the process of healing from burnout and in the process of decentralizing your business, your career, what it is that you do, you move it and you just make it a planet. So it still matters. It can be a big planet. It can be an important planet. But at the center of the solar system is you, your values, your desires, the shit that you want, your standards, your non-negotiables, right? And that is what we revolve around. That is what we make decisions. Non-negotiables. Love that. Yes. And so... It has been, you know, you're catching me (laughs) at this really beautiful time in life where I've like gotten my shit together (laughs) because, you know, especially in Latino culture, so much pressure is put on what you do, not so much in who you become, but just in like, how much money are you making? Are you able to take care of all of these accolades, all of these things? And obviously I want more ease for people. Like I want people to have less struggle. I want people to thrive. I want people to build wealth, right? I want people to experience that. But I also want them to experience deep fulfillment and deep success. And I want them to do it through a lot more ease and a lot more detachment 
And I want us to get really good at playing. And I want us to get really good at going on vacations and taking time off. And this is where we begin to like write a new narrative when we say like, okay, cool. So what are my values? And what do I want this life to look like? And this is where we begin to think bigger than what do I do? How much money do I want to make? How many likes on Instagram do I want to have? I love the vision of the the universe and and you are the sun and everything revolves around you. There's like seven pieces of happiness where it's like your your physicality, how are you feeling? Your emotional well-being, your your mental well-being, your spirituality. And so those seem like all the planets that those are all pieces revolving around you and and containing you, def- even defining you. I I think um and, and where you are in them. If something is drastically low, maybe like you experienced last last year, September, if something is drastically low, you're going to feel that, right? That something's out of whack and not orbiting well, not, you know, there's a little breakdown in the universe that you can feel it, right? Might take down everything else. And you being in Australia with this kind of mindset that work shouldn't be your end all, should not be just the entire focus. And Australia what do you get, like eight weeks of vacation anyway, if you were to be in that job structure? You know, so so the society over there is setting a pretty good paradigm for work-life balance. Do you see that in people? Do you see a better idea of success? I think there's just a higher quality of life here. People are paid higher wages. There is a lot more you know, I think we spoke about this when we first met, you know, just having free healthcare in and of itself is a bit of a game changer around just how secure you feel in life, right? I don't feel scared if I get sick, because I can just go to the doctor and it's free. And my medicine is like $6, you know, so um, and private health insurance is like $40 a week, right? It's not 1000s of dollars. So there's just little things that create a little bit more stability and a little bit more safety. I will say at the end of the day, it's still, you know, a Western developed colonized place that um, is still run by hustle culture and white supremacy and all of those things. So those kind of overarching narratives still exist, right? There's still a desire to have all of the shit, right? There definitely is a little bit more boundary around work-life balance. It's definitely something like, I've seen this a lot with like people who will work at global companies. So let's say they work here in Melbourne at Deloitte, right? And let's say they move to New York with Deloitte and it's like a completely different experience, right? Here you're honoring your time and, you know, there's a big conversation around, you know, work-life balance, whereas in New York or whereas in the U.S., it's just a completely different conversation and it's a different, a completely different expectation, right? So I think that There is a little bit more balance, but at the same time, I would say there's a lot more like materialism. There's still a higher standard around like, well, where are you going holidaying? And like, there's a lot of privilege here. What would you say, because you're working with founders, you're working with business leaders, thought leaders in your business. That is a huge portion of our listeners being that the Latinos are very much entrepreneurial. I think that's just deeply rooted in the culture. Could you explain a little further in that uh, for a client, for people listening, when you feel that complete burnout, like I can't do this anymore, maybe I'm wrong. There's this little voice saying, but don't quit. (laughs) How does someone find their space in themselves to rebound? It's such an important question. So good. So the first thing that I want to say, and Oh God, I think this is so incredibly important for all people, but specifically Latinos and specifically people who just come from a culture that like when you think of our lineage and you think of like all of the things that our families have done to get us to this place, it's been constant survival. And sometimes as the byproduct of that, we can find ourselves replicating those experiences and we can find ourselves living to survive. And my invitation for you is you are not here to survive. You are not here just to scrape by. You are not here just to make it through another day, right? And that's what burnout is. Burnout is pure survival, even with the best intentions, right? And so I want to really invite you to think about what does thriving look like, right? And thriving has a lot of different definitions to it. 
but something that, that is really a big distinguisher between survival and thriving is reaction versus proaction. And so the fact that you're sitting here having this conversation with us right now and that you're aware means that you are now given the invitation to begin to make choices and choose a new reality, right? Actually, my therapist said this to me this morning. He was like, you already know this, but the pivot point of change is recognition. So if you're feeling burnt out and you're feeling exhausted and you're feeling like, I know there is so much more, or I know I'm here for more, or I know I want to create more, or I know I just want to enjoy life more, whatever it is, can you just recognize here and now that that's something that you want? That would be the first thing that I would say. The second thing that I would say is, what can you do to make yourself safe? Now, what I mean by this is we are so used to pushing through things. And some of you might not like to hear this. <laughs> we are so used to white knuckling our way to where we want to go. We are so used to pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. We are so used to forcing our way to where we want to go. And not only does this not make it enjoyable for you, this is limiting your capacity. So when we're in survival mode and our cortisol is freaking through the roof and we're constantly stressed and we're burnt out, you are not thinking creatively. You are not creating your best work. You are not operating at your like highest space, right? When you have that much cortisol rushing through your blood and through your brain, you are not going to be the greatest leader, the greatest artist, the greatest business owner, whatever it is that you do. And so my greatest invitation to you and what I wish I would have done for years is I wish I would have gave myself permission to just get safe. So whether that's getting a part-time job or whether that's getting a therapist or whether that's hiring someone to support you or hiring another employee or whatever it is, talking to your friend, it can literally be anything, right? Um, what could create more stability so that you could have more space? So one of my like main mantras in life is don't set goals, set values. And the reason that I say that is because goals are subjective with where you're at at the time. What is so unshakable is when we get really, really clear on our values, our core values, right? What exists at the center of the solar system? And for me, like for a perfect example this year, like my four core goals are fulfillment, enjoyment, sustainability, and living on the edges. So going bigger, pushing up against my edges, right? That's it. Those are the four things that are guiding me this year. I can guarantee you when you sit down and you start to set your core values and your core values are ease and fulfillment and high standards or excellence, and you start to see the way that you're operating in burnout, you will start to see that burnout is not the catalyst to what you want. Burnout is only making you smaller, it's only making you slower, and it's only making you less creative. And the beauty of it when they listen to it is they can pause, go back, rewind, pause, go back, rewind. Because that is so on point. Because for a minute there, when you were talking about being safe and you're like, oh, we'll hire another person. I was like, well, that's kind of like always the problem of feeling unsafe is like making your money go somewhere else. I'm not feeling like you have enough money. And that that is such a hard leap. But when you tether it to the third point you brought up, which is just super powerful, just ridiculously powerful. And you realize like, well, OK, if, you know, enjoyment and, and wanting fulfillment, I thought that was a very powerful world because when, I, when you said fulfillment, I was thinking, oh, I want to do more art and I want to do more outdoor spaces and I want to do more unstructured time. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Suddenly I'm changing how I'm framing my entire life just by that one core value. When we decentralize what we do and we centralize our values, everything changes, right? So if my core values are enjoyment, right? Um, what does that mean in terms of holding myself to the standard of that word? I don't want to exist to do. I want to exist to be pleased and to enjoy and have fun and see the world. And I think that this is such a new narrative for Latino people, for Mexican people, for first gen people, for second gen people, right? It's work hard. It's strive for these things. And I'm not telling you not to work hard. I'm not telling you to not 
want these things. What I'm telling you is want those things, but do it in a way that feels good for you. Where's the first point that you go maybe recommend to someone to find that security, that to end the loneliness, to feel like someone's got my back? I think that the security (laughs) and the validation that you crave, that we all crave, first and foremost, must always come from within. I always say, you know, everyone wants to be a thought leader. Everyone wants to be recognized. Everyone wants to be validated. But no one wants to validate, like no one wants to validate themselves first. They want someone to tell them that they're good enough. They want want someone to tell them that they're excellent enough or safe enough or all these things. And the irony is that doesn't come until you are willing to give it to yourself. Can you give yourself, and I know that sounds so cheesy maybe, like give yourself the love that you desire, but actually guys, like actually that is so much of what we're craving. And then how do we feel a little less, a little less alone? I can actually speak to this so well because last year when I hit that, that wall of burnout, Um, I was incredibly alone. I felt so incredibly lonely. I think the world, and we have an epidemic of loneliness right now. I just, I think that so many people are suffering in silence alone. And so all I can tell you is that there are people who want to connect with you. There are people who want to support you. There are people who want to be supported by you, but you have to take the first step. And so I just started to reach out to anyone and everyone. I was like, you're going to be my friend. And to the people who I did have relationships with, I was blatantly open with them. I was like, I want us to be in each other's lives more. I want you to be around more. I want to see you more. I want to spend more intentional time with you. Um, And then that evolved. And then I started a cookbook club, right? So I started creating a monthly dinner where all of my girlfriends would come around. And then now they're friends and they're hanging out. So the reason that I just share that is because we can stay in victim and we can stay in story for a very long time. It is always going to be easier to sit in your house and tell stories about how no one gets you and no one wants to be your friend and you're totally alone than it actually is going to be to get up and just ask for help. That is a huge one. I think that one's a huge one right now specifically is limiting our, uh, the time with each other and then people aren't even going out. They're, they don't want to go out maybe because they, they're in that burnout stage. It's like, oh, that's someone gender. Oh, I don't want to get dressed up. Oh, I don't want to take the time to travel. But if you just had that moment in person, together, able to touch, uh, all that would get blown out of the water. All that fatigue in the moment. And it's like it's like to stay in it over and over again every day in that sense of I don't want to go out. I'm too tired. I'm just going to get my draggy clothes on. I'm just going to sit on the sofa and binge watch. If you've done that for the last week and it's not making you feel better, guess what? Right. (laughs) That's not your answer. Right. Find a different answer. Oh, I'd fly down to Melbourne in a second to be part of the cookbook club. No problem. I would do that. Yeah. Oh, please do. You are welcome anytime. That is really valuable. I think that was the biggest piece. And it was pre-pandemic a long time ago. This is 2006 or seven. I started this, but I was feeling so like, where is my cultura? Where is where are all those people that used to come you know, throw the door open when we were growing up, everyone piling in the house, everyone's bringing food and drink and the music. And then people start singing and the muse and the furniture moves. And we were just like, like you said, it was always a party. And I really thought that's what adult life was like. I thought that's what you did naturally as adults. And when I got to that point, I'm like, why don't you all do this? Why you're like, what did I not learn at home about having all my friends do this? So I literally started um, Friday Fresca. Friday Fresca was my, like I, like you were saying, invitation, but very much a hand-holding invitation because people need that sometimes, to any Friday between, it was between Memorial Day and my birthday at the end of October. Any Friday, every Friday, my doors are open, my house is open, show up. And you don't have to tell me what time you're coming, whether or not you're coming, what you're bringing. Da, 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 da. It's like, just show up. <laughs> and I think that's just the one liner for people. It's like, show up, show up in your life, you know, come forward in your life and 
like you say, be present, be present, make decisions for yourself. That's the thing about burnout is it keeps you a slave to the past and a slave to the future. And you are never present because you're always worried about what you've done and you're always worried about what's next. And you are never, ever present. And there is so much, I think one of my favorite things that has been a byproduct of healing from burnout is just how present I am, how alive and awake I am in my life right now today, having this conversation because for months I was just a slave to, well, what's next and how am I going to prove myself and what is more going to be and constantly discontent. And so to me, that's a a huge component of, of true success and fulfillment is just feeling safe enough to be in the moment, right? And in the moment when we, when we're that present, God, you can create magic, you can create Friday Fresca, and you can realize what it is that you really want. And you can sit down with your people and have an open and honest conversation and your life will change. Your life will absolutely change. Like I'm sure that space, not only did it change your life, but I'm sure it actually changed other people's lives, whether they said it or not. Um, Because things like that don't exist in this world anymore. Spaces where people can come as they are and eat and enjoy. And there's no quote unquote purpose, right? There's no end goal. It's just come, bring a plate of food or don't but just come and let's just spend time together. Preach. Boy, let that soak in. Let that soak in. That's going to be the clip of this entire episode. Like, wow. (laughs) Oh, so staying present in the moment, not worrying about the future, but maybe dreaming about the future. What do you hope comes down your path? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I am actually planning on starting an in-person business. Um, so as we've spoken about, I obviously love people. For any of you who are familiar with human design, my profile is a four six. And basically what that means, the four is the people person and the six is the role model. But four is really like my guiding light. And so for me, when I say community is at the center of everything I do, I mean that. Um, People and connecting with people is, it's like my life force. It's like my oxygen. Like nothing makes me happier than cooking for people. Like it is absolutely the thing that I love the most. So I wish that I would be cooking for people. I might be eventually, but this space will be a place for female leaders to connect. Um, without the emphasis on growth and purely with the emphasis on connection. So I think in the world that we live in today, we are really good at doing, as we just spoke about for the last hour, we are really good at doing, we are really hardworking. um, And I love that for us. But I think that we have gotten really bad, again, at being present, at playing, at relaxing, at disconnecting, at having conversations. Um, And I want to create spaces where people can do just that, in particular women. Um, So what I hope for me down the line is just more in-person interaction. And then I just hope for more of this conversation. A big part of my brand and a big part of what I'm here to do is creating a new paradigm around how we view success. Um, And I want to continue to educate people around that. I want to continue to give people the resources and give people the spaces um, to be able to understand what that means for them. And so... I hope that that message just reaches the world, honestly, whether that's a book, whether that's being on podiums, um, my future feels very physical. I love it. I love it. You know, in the moment when you were doing that and giving, 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 I instantly thought of your mother, the way you describe her and how you are giving people permission. There's that permission permission to redefine what success means for them and to allow themselves to go after that, free them from that sensibility that has been ingrained since we were born. But you are giving permission. I love that. That actually, that actually like makes me, actually chokes me up a little bit. I've never, I've never seen that, that parallel, but you are absolutely spot on with that one. Yeah, that's really, 
Ooh, that really hit home for me. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Creating spaces and creating permission for people who didn't, who weren't given it like I was. So yeah, yeah, huge. I love that. Thank you for that. (laughs) Oh gosh, Alexa, this was an undefined conversation. We had our points that we thought we would definitely hit, but wow, did not see this coming. You really are that force of energy and force of life that if it you can see like when someone gives you that permission early on you don't know who you're going to become but you are an amazing spirit a powerful joyful energy and thank you for sending it we are sending it around the world oh thank you so so much for sharing your time and your brilliance and your energy with us i really really appreciate you alexa martinez is all that isn't she amazing Did you have a moment to think your own core values right here, right now? Or at least did it have your mind stop and go, hey, wait a minute, how am I living my life? The beauty of learning this is that it allows you to keep growing, keep evolving, keep nailing those wants merely by applying new core values. It's a rinse and repeat cycle moving you in joy to create the life you want all the while accomplishing everything you set out to do. Amazing. You get a great sense of Alexa and her personality, her vivacity and absolute love of people. And I wish you were back here in LA. But then again, maybe I can crash on her couch for a bit. Melbourne, haven't been to Australia. Absolutely love you, Alexa. Putting it out there. Remember to reach out to her on Instagram at Alexa Coaches and peruse her profile for the link in bio that guides you to her availability and guides and lessons, everything that gets your curiosity back to you and bringing you back to the center of your universe. Join us next week when we dive deep into the gems of this full-length conversation in our 15-minute pod club episode. That's a quick refresher of the steps we learned here today to live our best life and how it applies to us all in all different situations, even beyond business and entrepreneur leaders. Plus, now that you know Alexa, you're not going to forget her. Step into your truth, ladies. Ciao. We love that you have subscribed to this podcast and continue to champion women who understand the life of all things Latina. Be sure to follow and subscribe to the Encuentros Your Voice podcast so you don't miss a single episode. They will automatically drop into your listing device each week. And we'd really, really appreciate if you take a moment to add to the reviews that we already have. Tell us what you like, tell us what you're hoping to hear, and we will get there. Share this with your friends and family to help us grow our comunidad and keep following us on our social media. Tu Encuentras Your Voice. We are so grateful to you for helping us grow this community and would love to learn of all the amazing Latinas who you know are creating the world we thrive in. So reach out to me on social media at Encuentras Your Voice and let's keep leaning into our authenticity in pride. Help us make Encuentras Your Voice the place where you are 100% represented.